Hey guys, so almost 5,000 years have passed since the Egyptian pyramids were built. However, unlike most other ancient structures, they still stand and continue to amaze both tourists and scientists. Who thought it would be possible to build such unbelievable structures? Who drug such massive stones? How did they really do it? And what interesting things aren't known to everyone about the Egyptian pyramids? So, the ancient Egyptians were one of many civilizations that believed in the existence of the afterlife. This belief is one of the biggest things of interest with the ancient Egyptians. They believed life did not end with death. The body died, but the spirit continued to live in the afterlife, where life force returns to the body. Now, according to their beliefs, the deceased would travel to the kingdom of Osiris, passing through many obstacles after being reborn in the afterlife. Egyptians would study different incantations while alive to use them after death and successfully overcome these difficulties. Now, overall, Egyptians took their preparations for the afterlife very seriously. The preparations included learning the various incantations as well as preparing the body for burial. So we're talking about mummification, one of the key traits of ancient Egypt. Since about 3400 BCE, the ancient Egyptians used the high art of mummification to prepare the bodies of the dead for their journey to the afterlife and to preserve them for eternity. So the remains were in a supersaturated soda liquor for 70 days. Then, the bodies were embalmed, which included many different technical stages. And at the end, the body is coated with fragrances and wrapped up in linen bandages, soaked in oils and resins. That's why mummies are so dark. Amulets to protect the deceased were placed between the bandages. Now, the Egyptians believed that after passing through all the trials, the deceased would arrive at the court of Osiris, who would decide if the deceased passed on to Aru, similar to heaven in Christianity, or if the spirit would die. But naturally, the most important part of burial culture in ancient Egypt was the pyramids that were the tombs of the pharaohs. Egyptians built pyramids to make their pharaohs grander and to give them immortality. You probably have heard of the pyramids of Giza. They're the calling card for Egypt and attract multitudes of tourists annually. And the Great Pyramid of Giza is considered the only wonder of the ancient world that still remains. Now, many people believe that there aren't other pyramids besides the one at Giza, but that isn't true. Officially, there are 118 pyramids in the country, and many of them have unique qualities that stand out. For example, the Pyramid of Djoser in Saqqara is the oldest remaining large stone building in the world. Get this, it was built back in 2650 BCE. The Bent Pyramid in Dasher has an interesting bent appearance, but the famous Great Pyramid of Giza, or the Pyramid of Cheops, is considered the largest Egyptian pyramid. Its original height was 481 feet, but it's now shrunk to 454 feet, but that's still pretty impressive. So to understand how big that is, the pyramid is as tall as a 40-story building. So that's pretty incredible considering how the pyramids were built three millennia before the Common Era, almost 5,000 years ago. So how were they built and who ordered it? So the main construction material is limestone. It's used for the interior and the detail work. The outer face of the pyramids was often made from thick white Tura limestone. And other materials were used in addition to limestone. For example, red granite would be used on the interior walls and the floors were made out of basalt and alabaster. Basalt was brought to Giza from the Fayum Oasis, and the alabaster was from Luxor, a city in Upper Egypt on the eastern bank of the Nile. Now, according to some experts, the average weight of one block used to build the pyramid was about 16 tons and would require at least 45 workers for transport. So, those are the materials. But how exactly were the Egyptian pyramids built? What secrets are they hiding? How were they able to make such wonders? And, most importantly, who built these creations? So the construction of one pyramid would take usually about 20 to 30 years. And for a long time, many people thought, and still think, that the pyramids were built by slaves on the pharaoh's orders. This belief comes from evidence from the historian Herodotus, 
who believe that the Great Pyramid was built by 100,000 slaves working around the clock. But that is a false belief. Now, many experts believe that ancient Egypt didn't have so many slaves to direct them all to build just one structure. Additionally, 100,000 people simply cannot work simultaneously and without stopping. So this myth was sorted out in the 20th century after various films about ancient Egypt were released. But it's time for us to move on since slaves weren't involved. Also, some people falsely think the Egyptian pyramids in Giza were built by Jews. That's another false proposal that is nevertheless discussed. Only relatively recently, after archaeologists found the tombs of the builders, were the Jewish people forced to say that their ancestors had nothing to do with the construction of the pyramids at Giza, since they appeared in ancient Egypt significantly later. So, most researchers believe that the pyramids were built by professional laborers. The first piece of evidence that the pyramids weren't built by slaves appeared by chance. On April 14, 1990, an American tourist was riding a horseback at the Giza Plateau. The horse ran into a previously unknown sun-dried wall 700 yards to the south of the Sphinx and threw the tourist to the ground. The head of the Pyramid Security Service learned about the incident and informed archaeologists. Now the wall turned out to be part of an ancient tomb, a cemetery for the pyramid's builders. 30 large tombs and about 600 more smaller ones were found as a result. It's likely the larger ones were used for the overseers and the smaller ones for the laborers. Then, another part of the cemetery with 43 graves was found. Judging by the writings, they were used to bury the top managers, overseer of the pyramid side, head of the draftsmen, overseer of the masons, head of the laborers, overseer of the craftsmen, head of the pharaoh's works. So the pyramids builders were buried near the pyramids, and they were given their own tombs. Additionally, Studies of their remains showed that the builders were given the same level of medical aid that was given to the elite. Now, would they treat slaves like that? So, according to experts, the Great Pyramid was built by two teams, a main team and an assistant team. So, the main team had 4,000 workers and was made up of stonemasons. They worked in quarries and lived with their families in villages near the pyramid. The assistant team's members were from 16 to 20,000 strong and built the ramps, hauled the blocks, were responsible for the tools, mixed mixtures, and took care of supplies. They lived in a camp near the main team's village. Now experts think the main team worked year-round, while the assistant team started actively working on the construction around late summer when the Nile flooded and it was easier to move the blocks on the wet soil. So in 2016, archaeologist and Egyptologist Yukinori Kawai went out in front of an auditorium and said that there is a huge amount of data on the outside of the Great Pyramid, but not enough about the inside. He proposed several hypotheses about how the inside of the pyramid may bring methods of its construction to light. He thinks if the inside of the pyramid was made from horizontally placed blocks, the construction may have used straight ramps. It's worth noting that it's forbidden to climb the pyramids. However, there are exceptions and Yukinori Kue could climb the Great Pyramid for scientific purposes. He in particular sometimes does this to take pictures from the top of the pyramids that are then used to make 3D models. So in 2016, Kue and other specialists completely scanned the Great Pyramid using modern technology. The project was led by the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquity. The team of experts used thermography, 3D reconstruction, and radiography to study the pyramid. The results were turned into a single 3D image. In the end, the team was able to discover two spaces inside the pyramid. So, one theory suggests the chambers may have been normally empty spaces that were left over after the pyramid was built. Another suggests that they may be previously unknown tombs. So, one of the most common questions about ancient Egypt is, how did the workers move such heavy blocks? Physicists from the Netherlands University showed that stone blocks used to build the Egyptian pyramids were moved along sea sand. This idea was previously based on ancient frescas. The image of burial during the 12th dynasty shows how 172 people pulled an alabaster statue of the exalted Egyptian monarch Tehuhotep II on sleds. The statue weighed 48 tons and the people poured water on the sand in front of the ancient statue. So this gave the scientists a base to theorize that stone blocks were also dragged in such a way. 
the Dutch physicists held an experiment under laboratory conditions. They prepared models of Egyptian sleds and measured the pulling force necessary to move it on both dry and wet sand. It turns out it's twice as easy to pull on wet sand. The sleds would slide along wet sand easier because the sand wouldn't gather up in front of it like dry sand does. Now, considering the blocks were drugged by dozens of professional laborers, we can unanimously say that the construction of pyramids wasn't as unbelievably difficult as we had previously thought. Now, don't get me wrong, it was no doubt a difficult task, but the construction methods look very logical. But the pharaoh Khufu, or Cheops, wasn't wrong about being immortal. He left this work 45 centuries ago, but his name will be remembered for a long time. All thanks to the last remaining ancient wonder of the world.